guys, and welcome back to another week of the Both Sides Podcast. Hey, Rachima, as always. Hey, guys. What's up? How you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys had a wonderful week. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, I feel like That's every week intro. we talk about our intro, but it's really because she makes it so dry. Um, I was so dry. I'm saying, like, hope you guys had a good week. What else is there to say? He's like, hello. Hope you guys had a good week like that's mad corny like as always yo 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 i hope your week was popping was lit welcome to another episode of both sides podcast is your boy cheems big daddy cheems you know what i'm saying is that what you want me yeah, to do yeah that's that is so much better than your dry ass hello good evening everyone this is chima like oh you sound like Listen, a i try to be professional i try to be, you never know <laughs> when cnn or something might be listening and they want to get a nice gentlemanly voice that's prim and proper on their network, you know, just, I don't want to be as British as you on, on this podcast. You know, I have goals and aspirations. I'm dead. First of all, one, I'm not a bird. And two, even Mm. if I was a bird, okay, they're going to appreciate me for being myself. That's it. So let's move on. How was your week? Wow. Look at that. After insulting me, then this is what you want to go. How was your week? (laughs) No. But um, week was good. Um, I think this week I'm starting to see that I'm actually getting old, man. Uh, my body isn't the same. I'm I'm tired. Uh, I can't like, I can't go as hard as I used to anymore, man. Like, <sighs> my brother just told me that apparently, like at age 26, your your cells start dying. They don't really like replenish or something. I, I don't know what he was saying, but I thought something that, that happened at of, 25. He just told me 26, but either way, the point is I'm dying. So I can't do as much as I used to anymore. Um, <laughs> so like this week, what I do this week, um, work out hard, lifting a bunch of weights and stuff. And I didn't really recover as well. And I decided to also go out, um, to party and stuff. So, so you're being a body basically. I wasn't being a thought. I was just going out. I mean, enjoying mm-hmm. myself you know doing mm-hmm. stuff that any young person should do but i guess I, I don't know my limits and i need more sleep than i than i thought i can't do the whole no need to sleep team no sleep you know to team grind it out and turn up all the time now i really actually have to sleep like a good eight hours if not nine a day so i can actually if, function or if not even that like even before i go out like I legit take a nap <laughs> because oh, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I, oh, oh if I'm going to make it through this night and be a little turn yep. up mommy, whatever you need from me, I need a nap before we go yeah, out. Yeah, I can't. And that's what, like, when people tell me I didn't take a nap, I'm like, I don't understand how because without, that's, that's the first thing I do. Before I go out at night, I need to take a nap beforehand. Like, there's no other way for me to function without me actually taking a nap. To, to get the prime and turn up teams, yeah. That's the only way. But, That's so um, corny. Yeah. I can't. I can't believe it. It has come down to this. I can't drink the same. I was tweeting about that the other day. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I can't drink the same. I can't party the same. It's like yo, I, I legit need a nap. Oh, I was like, oh, we going now? Good, okay, though. let me take a nap so I, I can be fully been, rested. I, mean, I don't think we need to to really drink as much anymore. I think now nowadays, I just want like nowadays. I don't. I take shots here and there, but. I'm a bigger guy. So first of all, it takes a lot of shots for me to even get drunk and I'm too lazy and I don't even like the the taste of liquor to me taking the amount of shots needed for me to get drunk. So it's almost pointless to even drink or take shots as much anymore just because it takes so much of it for me to get drunk um, mm. or to even feel anything. Um, and plus like I, I'm, I rather just have like a good, like, there's a good drunk, like wine drunk where you're just tipsy and nice and just chilling. You're not, you know, you're not trying to bounce off walls. You know, you're not necessarily throwing up. You're just like good. No, that's the kind of, no, that's, that's real. Kind of it, it, it'd be one drink that'd be even almost having me on my ass. That's, that's how bad it's gotten. Oh, nah. I don't even know how I got here, but we here. And you know, I heard you, body. It been like, yeah. it, it's saying no. <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm, too much. like the taste of liquor, just the taste of the, I guess my mouth nowadays and my stomach can't handle everything I used to be ha- able to handle before. Like mm, the taste of liquor mm, is, mm-hmm. is just Cause he was disgusting. 
I, I, where are you getting these things from? Like, I really wasn't. But, um, yeah, I was chilling though. But, um, even apart from that, like, I came back from Canada last week. So I've really been this, the month of April actually was a move because we, I know we went to Harrisburg the first weekend to mm -hmm. surprise, uh, Taiwo. Last week I was in Toronto. This week I was up and about the streets. Next week I'm being, uh, DC. So it's like, I'm just moving and I need to find a way to, to kind of like take the appropriate amount of sleep. And actually, in addition to that, it actually makes sense why LeBron, it makes sense now why LeBron started eating better because this old age is, it's a tricky thing, man. You really got to start eating better so you can, you can still perform at the high levels in which you were performing before. I'm not saying I'm an NBA player, but you know, what I'm <laughs> doing is pretty much athletic. You know, it's a sport, like, you know, turning up and making these moves. It should be pretty much a, a, a high level sport, you know? Just saying. I, I, you see how I'm I'm stammering because I have I'm a loss for words talking about athletic because you up and about these streets. Okay, that means everybody is vegan. athletic. I must be a vegan. Yeah, I wanted to try you know kind of do like what Beyonce did for like a few days and like a month, and so nah, because I, I did shook, see something on like Business Insider that yeah. someone tried it and you know they felt really good. They dropped a couple pounds like. That felt lighter. And even when I do detox, you know, like you do feel mm -hmm. great. You know, you got to yeah. continue on that path. So uh, let, um, I'll keep you guys posted. I don't know if I'm really going to, but, you know, I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know. Tempting. I don't know if we can. I don't know. The thing, I can't. I, I really want to give up meat and stuff, but giving up meat is hard, man. Like, you know, some chicken, that turkey, some lamb. That oxtail, like, how do you give that up, man? Mm, how do you? It's even, hard because I really no? just didn't have oxtail. No exactly. Like, how do you say no to some lamb chops that are, you know, with some sauteed onions that are just, you know, grilled to perfection? You know, the things just like melts in your mouth, just falling off the bone. Like, how do you say no to that for some grass? I'm dead. <laughs> you know, I'm dead. Anyway, man, shout out to vegetarians. Uh, how was your week, though? Oh, uh, week was chill. You know, um. <laughs> I feel like I always say that because it is chill. Didn't really do too much. Actually, I did go to a Yankee game on Friday, and it just really proves to me, you know, because it was kind of nice during the day, then it was freezing at night. Mm -hmm. And when I say sport fans are committed, um, they, are committed. they are very committed. Um, that level of commitment, I hope to never reach in my life because <laughs> sitting outside in the cold and over here trying to fake, you know, be excited while you freezing is not the wave at all. <laughs> like it wasn't that bad. Like once we, uh, actually got in, like sitting down and stuff, but yeah, I was just sitting there like looking around they mad excited like rolls of beer chugging doing shit like playing games and i haven't been to like a baseball game in like years like honestly since i was probably like 14 so i was just like hmm this is how it goes down and i was like i don't know if they drinking this much to keep them warm and that's how they survive these games um but i was like no <laughs> so that was that was definitely um Interesting. And I did check out the Igloo pop-up shop in the Lower East Side as well. So, um, either than that, it was, oh, and I went to a Gucci concert. So oh, it was a pretty good week. That? It was good. Did anybody, anybody get shot? No, I was real nervous because, you know, a lot of the people going there was a little rowdy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot rowdy, actually. And I was just like, oh, hmm, okay, a bunch of, bunch of hood people. But, you know, it was a mixed crowd, though. Um, Heard they were passing out bricks as party favors. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. he, was, he was good. And then Keisha, Keisha Kaior came out to... Um, when he was performing Freaky Girl and, um, you know, was dancing, but at the, the same time, too. Freaky Girl. That's my I, song, yeah. Yeah. I was, I thought somebody was going to start shimmying up in that bitch. I was about <laughs> to be like, please don't. Um, but it was good. But I wanted her to like dance on him a little more. Like when that part came on, she was like on the other side of the stage, I guess just trying to be sexy. Uh -huh. But, you know, I wanted more. <laughs> so, but. Strawberry Instagram cute. cute. 
Yeah, I'm she sure was. Um, yeah, but it was, seems, like was very, seems like a fun week. Um, I'm trying to actually find. Um, I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm trying to find another, like, not another job, but like something else to do apart from. Actually, don't. No, never mind. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I let me not say that relax. too quickly. Yeah, let me just, let me just let me just relax. Anyway, though, but um, there another good thing that came out was uh, well, this week, well, not this week, but since we haven't, I guess, guys haven't heard from us. Uh, another good thing that came out was the Cardi album, and that came out. What was the weekend we were in Harrisburg, right? Yeah, and that is yeah. um, that was a bop. Let me tell you because. The first well, well songs that resonated with myself. Nice for what was, to these niggas, you know? Yeah, nice for what to these niggas. Yeah. Really? That, that, that okay, me, okay, that okay. That me, that me, that for 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 me. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Okay, continue. You are so fucking obnoxious, like. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, mm. so Car- Cardi B came out with the album. Like I said, I was saying it was a bop before I was really interrupted. And I do with SZA is my favorite track. And if you don't know how I feel about SZA, um, is that I don't feel. Um, is I really wow. think she's highly overrated. Um, personal opinion, sorry guys, just really can't get into the music. Sorry. But anyway, so I, but I really did like that track. And then She's Bad with YG, son. Yeah. That shit. Oh, that shit going to have me reacting if it comes on in a party, which I don't really go to anymore. But if I'm there, wow. it's going to make me react. And then I Like It was a yeah. really good song, too. I mean, the whole the whole album is just filled with bops. Wow, like, I feel lit. like you could just... Um, it's a lip. Yeah, it's like it's a bunch of singles. Yeah, like you you could listen to it anytime. I think the only one really is the song with Kalani that I was like, oh, okay, this is this is cool. Yeah, the singing the singing one, um, right? Yeah, but the rest of even that, but the rest of that, like the rest of the album was good. So I was Son, really proud of Cardi. Mm-hmm. That song says it's lit. I left the nigga on red cause I felt like it. Dress me down in a red set my red jacket. Dapper, dapper, uh, 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 fine. No wonder, wonder why, uh, 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 I like, I do. I like that thing I do. I do. Okay, see, I'll let you rock for a second now. It's done. It's, it, party time is over. Wow. Cause you, okay. y- y'all niggas always get carried away. But yes, and that's sure you're gonna see it in the club in the summertime when they come on in the day party. You know, the DJ doing his set, whatever. Yep. And then the, the record scratches like, chicka, 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 chicka. And then this song drops. And then all the girls gonna be like, oh my God, that's my song. Pulls out your phone, wow. Snapchat, you know, put it on the selfie view. And then, you know, they're going to be pointing their finger in the camera, talking to the nigga that don't ever give a fuck about leaving, you know, you leaving his ass on red because he wasn't going to reply anyway. And then she's going to be like, let that nigga on red. Cause if, uh, you know, and it's going to be a vibe. Yeah, uh, so it's a, it's a good, it was actually, that was a good week weekend for like women too. Cause apart from Cardi B dropping like straight bangers, uh, Drake dropped this. Nice for what? Cheating again, you know. Yeah. Let me know that for me. No, 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 no. You already had your moment. Stop. Let me for me. Let me for me. Let me for me. Let me know that for me. Let me for me. Let me know that for me. Anyway, so Drake did drop because Chima won't stop. Um, Drake did drop his single, Nice for What, in the video, I think, released at the same time. And it was, it was good. You know, just in the video. Yara Shahidi. Yara Shahidi, bro. Yara Shahidi. Yara Shahidi has the face of a goddess, man. Oh my goodness. Oh, Lord have mercy. She, well, you know, one day on this episode, on this podcast, we're going to talk about whether it's all right for us to lust off to her, even though I'm about eight years older than her or so. Um, mm. yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, Yara mm-hmm. Shahidi was bad. Great music. Um, I really can't wait for Mimosa Drunk. You know, while you're not expecting nice for what, and the next thing just pops up on there because that's when the litness just enters your body and you just can't handle it and you just have to turn all the way up. You know, um, summer 2018 is definitely going to be 
a lit summer. And I think I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my spirit. It's about to be, uh, you know, it's going to be oh, fire. It's going to be a good summer. And um, Kanye is back on Twitter and he did state that um, I think his album, Pusha T's yeah, album, K. Cuddy. Cuddy, and I think Tiana mm-hmm. all dropping in June. So yeah. I feel like, you know, the best month ever, you know, your fellow. I just hope- girl, excuse me. I'm still talking. Your fellow girl, Yo, Gloria, don't was get born in, in June. Her. And Bye. 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 Behind birthday. Okay. Anyway, the greatest month ever, June. All these albums oh. are dropping. So oh. I'm very excited for what summer 2018 is about to bring us so with the nice for what cardi b carrying us i know jay cole just dropped his album as well chun li um, chun li nikki with chun li oh yeah I, I haven't even heard you know that's a, it's it's actually good like honestly i would love i would love to hear, hear cardi b on that as well but um it's actually a very good song it's short but it's good well it's it actually- like nikki and cardi kind of got some small little beef going so um, that fake beef, whatever. But um, <laughs> even but even though this, I was at a party yesterday. I heard this Takashi song. I didn't even know it was actually. I knew it was by Takashi, but I never really went to go find the name. Is what that is Blinky that with Gummo? the Spiggy? Gummo. Oh, that's my track with the Blinky and the Spiggy. Yeah, when the Blinky. Yeah, when the when the Blinky. Yeah, no Spiggy. Yeah. Yo, that song is so fire, yo. But you know, either way, it's, <laughs> that must be a little summer. Um. But yeah, uh, but even in, in I guess staying on the music topic, did you watch Beyonce's uh concert? I did. I watched Coachella? half of it. I watched pretty much like almost the first hour. I still haven't watched the rest of it, and it was really good. And not even to hype it because you know I never considered myself to be a Beyonce stan, part of the Beehive, yeah, Beehive, whatever you call Sam. it. I appreciate her music. I like what she does. I have been to her concert, you know, but I think this performance kind of pushed it over the edge for me because I'm watching it and I'm looking and I'm like, yo, honestly, Beyonce is that bitch. Like she really is like top of the line. And at this point to not acknowledge that is hating, like just watching The way she's dancing, and I'm not even saying that like, oh, you gotta, you know, like everything she does, or even if you don't like mm-hmm. her music, that's cool. But I'm just talking about like the talent and like all that dedication mm-hmm. and even the attention to detail. What's the word I'm looking? Yeah, attention to de- detail and the athleticism. You know, I can't speak mm-hmm. English sometimes. Um, that takes to be, you know, dancing on stage for that long. And even though I have seen her in concert, like this performance was it. Just everything from like giving us that HBCU experience to, you know, doing, you know, her fake, I guess, what, what would it be? Fraternity since it was the guys. Um, just yeah. that whole experience singing, um, the black anthem, lift every voice and sing. Like I was just, I was watching it and I was just, it was giving me a feel. It was giving me a vibe. And I was like, you know what? You know what? I think I'm officially part of the beehive and it pained me to say because i never wanted to be one of them people because i think they'd be a little ridiculous sometimes i'm sorry yeah, y'all. like it's a, it's a little intense but after seeing that i was like you know what i think i just went from a regular fan to like no like i'm full on the beyonce train y'all got me and then i've started thinking i was like you know what i feel like i've always been on the train low key or let me just say i was on the platform i just never boarded the train because uh-huh. You know, I was just doing too much. Like I was looking like in Harry Potter platform nine, three fourths or whatever uh, it's called. That's where I was nine at. And three quarters, just, but girl, now I'm please like, don't disrespect Harry Potter like that. I said nine three and fourths. three quarters. No, nine and three quarters. Say it with me. Nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters. But that's the same thing. You're going to say with nine and three fourths. No, it's not. How, no. But when they send them an invitation, they didn't say same. nine and three fourths. It's nine and three quarters. Please. <laughs> don't get sent to, to freaking score quartz. Instead of Hogwarts or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. that's where I was at. I was on platform nine and three quarters, you know. But now my ass finally got on the train to fucking ho- Hogwarts, or should we call, you know, the Beyonce, the Beehive, whatever. So I'm here. So it was really good. And the Everybody is Mad performance honestly was my favorite off the strength of just the way the horn sounded with the song and the dancing and whatever. I, I think I've watched that, that clip like 
a hundred times. I'm not even joking. Like it was just mm. that good to me. So I I enjoyed it. What did you think? The the it was great. I was actually in bed. Um, I was in Toronto when doing this. Uh, I was in bed watching the concert and um. It just first of all, I wasn't gonna watch it at first, but when I figured out there was a live stream, which I started watching it, and there's just so many things. So I don't know where to even start with that. I guess I can start with the, the athleticism. Jeez, oh my goodness! Kind of I, mean, I, normally, I normally say it easily. Athleticism, hmm? yeah, I normally say it easily, but I don't know what happened. But anyway, um, the fact that she was able to perform like what, like two hours or two and a half hours without breaking a sweat, um, without breathing hard doing these in heels and boots for two and a half hours in itself is is extraordinary i was i won't say i was a fan um the reason i won't say i was a beyonce fan is because i was never buying her tickets to any concert shows ever um i don't have beyonce money for that um i mean i do but i don't want to spend it on that mm-hmm. um and plus like either way i won't even say just beyonce concert i'm not even a fan of concerts in general mm-hmm. um of music concerts so I, I wouldn't say I was a fan, but I, I appreciated her music. You know, I think Four was probably my one of my favorite. Probably is my favorite album from Beyonce. Um, really, that's my least favorite album. Yeah, that's one. Of my, that's my favorite. That's the one with it has Countdown on it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my that's my album. Um, and I mean Beyonce was always cool with me. I never understood the Beyonce hype per se. I mean, but I could appreciate like this just uh, made me appreciate her work ethic even more. Like the way this lady put, cause this concert in itself was to, to manage all these people and have everybody dancing and the instrumentals. Like it was, it was great. It was great. Coachella fan, the people that were at, at the concert were trash because the reactions were terrible. I was looking at the crowd. Terrible. It was so weak. And I don't know, maybe because they were white, maybe they didn't understand the little, I mean, the little references that were going on and things like that. It's, it was definitely a black concert. I would say mm-hmm. that. And I don't, I don't like to say that per se, just because it shouldn't be necessarily a black and white concert, but you could tell it was definitely more black people would understand exactly what was going on as we did. Um, right. And that's where the reactions people. were coming yeah. from because it's like, you yep. won't really, re- you know, get like, understand. yeah. The lift every voice and sing and even down to exactly. like the HBCU experience, the marching bands, the, you know, exactly. the fraternity stuff. Like, you're not going to get it mm-hmm. unless you are immersed in that exactly. culture. And, and, and it's, it's one thing. Like, she's in, like, Coachella's in, what, L.A. or something? Or some, somewhere, like... Somewhere in Cali. Like, it's not yeah, L.A. Like Coachella Valley, whatever. Yeah, somewhere mm-hmm. in Cali. So, I mean, there's a lot more white folks and, you know, the... I won't say hippies, per se, but I don't think they're really hip to black culture like that. If she was in, like, freaking Alabama, maybe Alabama or some... Maybe D.C., um, mm-hmm. even though DC's not down south, but like the DC culture, I mean, and all that, like where the Atlanta, it would mm-hmm. have been so lit. Like the crowd would have been, it would have been madness. Oh, if honestly. it was in Atlanta, dog. yeah, it would have been mad. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think probably, it probably would have affected her just because she probably wouldn't be able to hear herself sing. Um, just because of how loud it probably would have been in whether a stadium or whatever. That's why um, they have the, the earpieces. So they can but even that, the, uh, I, they, that's what I'm saying. But even with that, with the amount of of people and the reactions there, she probably still wouldn't be able to hear herself. But either way, the concert was phenomenal. The the athleticism was was a one. Even when Jay Jay Z came on and rapped twelve lines, and this man was out of breath, huffing and puffing. Dog, the <laughs> dog, like he he looked like a geriatric patient. I was like, 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 who is this? <laughs> like even with and, the clip get, from like, this older, weekend. Though. No, the yeah. clip from this weekend, he was kind of pantsed too. And I was like, no, Jay-Z, you need to get it together. Your wife is Beyonce. Please. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't, like, he doesn't work as hard. For, to me, I don't think he works as hard physically um, as her because she, one, she, I, I think because she's one, she's a woman, she's probably going to be, and, no, I don't even say that. Because she, Beyonce is really energetic and moves a lot at her concerts. That's how she usually, from what I've seen, um, she's always like moving around and dancing. So, her cardio and her senses and her, her workouts alone are her endurance is up there. Mm-hmm. Jay Z raps, he walks up and down the stage. He's not twerking. He's not doing stripper legs. He's not doing most of that. So his, he's not prepared for all of that. I'm pretty sure he didn't really even prepare for this concert for, for like he just said, Oh yeah, I'm just going to walk across the stage, rap with you. And that's it. 
Yeah, no, it's calls. not really much to prepare for. Yeah, you're it's, walking it's, up it's really not much. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's your, it's your own rap. You, all you got to do is remember the lines and, and maybe the, control the adrenaline, um, you know, while you're there. But apart from it, like, the concert was phenomenal. And I'm just mad. I'm, I won't say I'm mad. I'm happy that she did that because she was the first black woman to ever headline a Coachella concert. Mm -hmm. Um, but the crowd were just like, they didn't, the crowd didn't deserve it at all. They were undeserving of that. But we, the people deserve that. Yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, Twitter was crazy. Like I think they said she had like a million and something tweets or like some crazy amount of some crazy number within that two and a half hour span. um, Yeah. It was, no, it was really good. Like she really gave us a full concert. You know, so, and which I was going yep. to ask, cause I'm not really familiar with like Coachella and the headliners and how long, how long they perform for. But I wondered yeah, I if know. the headliners perform for like two hours. Cause I was like, no, this is a whole concert, you know, Bro, and they actually need to like, put it legit. on DVD. Legit, legit. Like it's, I don't know, it was phenomenal. Um, but either way though, shout out to Beyonce. I'm happy for, her. I won't say I'm a stand per se. I mean, I can, I just, if anything, Beyonce is definitely my endurance goals. Um, <laughs> I want to be able to perform two and a half hours without breathing and panting like I just walked up a flight of stairs. Dog, even um, a flight of stairs be having me tired. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's crazy. And for, and it's so crazy. Another thing that's also that I guess I want to shed light on is the fact that, um, First of all, I didn't even know Beyonce was headlining the concert until maybe I wasn't, I'm not a music head like that or I'm not a concert head for me to really notice or whatever. But the fact that her dancers, the people that are part of it did not um, say a word about it. There was no leakage of the, of the performance. There was, there was nothing whatsoever. You know, it's, it's a testament to how great that woman is as well. Maybe she had them signed, signed non-disclosure agreements, you know, or something, but. The fact that nobody heard or saw this um, rehearsal, and apparently it's been going on for like eleven months, like mm-hmm. or something, something crazy. There was no peep, even her, like some of her dancers I follow on Instagram. There was, there were no hints that you know they were working with Beyonce or something or anything. It's, it's crazy. It's wild. Well, Beyonce one, is, is the goat. Honestly, honestly, if I was one of the dancers or on production set, what, however, I'm involved in the you know making of this whole Coachella concert first of all you knew she was headlining because she was supposed to headline last year and she got pregnant so they pushed it to this year but either way you I wouldn't even sign you wouldn't even have to get me to sign a non-disclosure agreement because as soon as the word Beyonce is involved I would shut the fuck up immediately I wouldn't even want anyone to be like oh wait Gloria what what are you doing Uh, Beyonce, who's that? I don't even know who Beyonce. she is. Like, I, yeah, I, you, honestly, cause you know how that goes. I feel like everyone yeah. would know, except for obviously Tiffany Haddish, but you know, like when it comes to no Beyonce, <laughs> you would shut up because you not even try to run the risk of you being the, the one to open their big mouths and say anything. Word. I wouldn't even want that on me. So I would definitely shut up. That's great, man. It was, it's amazing though. Um, the concert, there's like 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10 to Beyonce. Shout out to her. She did her thing. I'm very proud of that woman. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh, another thing about Coachella that kind of upset me. I mean, this is more so for those who know about Wizkid. Hopefully by now, most people should know Wizkid. He's also the, he was, he produced. One dance with Drake. Um, he's pretty much the reason why one dance is one dance and amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, and for all of you who I feel like right now, Africa is pretty more at the African culture and the African men and, you know, everything's becoming so mainstream now, even Afrobeat. Now people should know who Whiskey is or at least have heard the name somewhere before. Well, at least um, a he song. Was, yeah, a song or something like he was also supposed to be at the, on the, pretty much on the same stage with Beyonce. Not on the same stage, but physically, but like the same night or whatever with Beyonce. Um, and the first week he didn't show up. And Biscuit has, is notorious for, you know, not showing up to when the time needs him. Um, mm. you, you would think that at a stage like this where 
it's everybody's watching. The world is watching. You're in, you're in, you're in another land. Like people in Africa know you. People already know who you are. So now you're pretty much trying to conquer another, you know, area. You would think the man would show up. Does he show up? No, he doesn't. No. Apparently his band had visa troubles. Um, and they couldn't show up for the, for the performance. My problem with this is <sighs> Coachella. It's not something they tell you a week or a month before the concert. Mm -hmm. You know about this months ahead of time. Months ahead of time. Why didn't you, as soon as you got the word, it, maybe maybe you use one month to find your band or whatever, to find what's important, you know, the pieces together. Why didn't you start filing paperwork early? Why wait till the last minute to start filing paperwork? Cause so, for things like a V, like a visa is something that you definitely want to file early because obviously you can get denied. So you want to make, you want to have, you know, a contingency plan so that, mm -hmm. you know, that you have enough time before the concert so you can, you know, make those adjustments. Mm -hmm. Why are you waiting till the last minute to apply for a visa for your band members? Cause like, I'm I, I don't, running I don't, on African time. And let me tell you something. When, when I heard, cause See, I don't know the logistics behind how these like festivals are ran. Like, you know, so I had two questions. My first thing was one. Well, my first thing wasn't even a question. It was really more embarrassment because you was kid being kind of essentially like the face of Afrobeats as we know it here exactly. in this modern day and age really had the opportunity to put on not only for yourself, but for other Afrobeats. Um, exactly. artists to come so the fact that you royally screwed up in such a major way was one very embarrassing so then it further proves the point of when you're trying to put someone on and they're like oh well we're trying to get exactly. kid, but this is how this happens so i don't even know if i want to take a chance for like let's just say david or techno or Shasta Wale, Shasta Wale, whoever you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. they were like wow we tried it with Wizkid, who essentially is like one of the biggest and like look what happened like are you guys even serious enough to even try to take a chance on like that's how it would read to me like you only have one opportunity you exactly. know so that was oh, my first initial like reaction mm. then it's like one okay so they didn't get the visas to the band too um i don't know if it's possible to get another band you know what i'm saying like or is it how did the visa get screwed up was on your behalf? Was it Coachella? Like, how do how does this work? You know, like I mean, who's so to blame the embassy here? could deny you. The embassy, could, if I think with the visas, they run your bank accounts and stuff like that, depending on whether you have a risk to run away. You know, your, your nation. There's, there's so many things they run, and it's not Coachella that necessarily has anything to do with it mm -hmm. or Whiskid. Um, it's more so the embassy that denies whether or not they give you a visa for it mm -hmm. um nobody knows how the the embassy what they you know sometimes it is personal decisions just ba based on people that they may not like you okay no you're not getting it mm -hmm. um but, but regardless the point is that when you know this like whiskey you have like you're 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 nigerian you've dealt with flying abroad before you've dealt with flying across you know multiple nations you know the process for a visa why are you not doing this ahead of time like is it that I, and i don't know whether or not maybe like somebody brought up a point saying that David O's, David O's work ethic is, is, is really different. Like it's almost, it's surreal that it's, it's actually wild that he's that hardworking, you know, especially coming from money. Mm -hmm. Um, we think that whiskey because he broke up, he woke up poor, he was born poor, he came from almost nothing that he is his work ethic or, you know, or his, his work ethic would be up there. The need for him to put his name out there would be up there, but maybe because he's, you know, he's where he is now, he's content with where he is. So he doesn't really care about anything else afterwards. I don't know what it is, but hmm. this is, it's, it's just bad. It's just a, it's a bad look. Um, and what's even worse than this is that he was okay. He said, he tweeted all oh, apologies, blah, 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 this and that visa issues. So I'm going to be showing up for the second weekend, which is this weekend now. Um, does he show up? Hmm. No, but what was the excuse now? What was the excuse? I don't even know. I don't even know, but he didn't show up for the second weekend, which is like, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I don't. And what's, to me, what, what's even, I guess even bigger than that is that is, is the culture that we've created as Nigerians. Um, 
every day I find more, another reason to be upset at being Nigerian. Like I love Nigeria. I love my people, but sometimes I wonder why I'm even proud to be Nigerian sometimes because these niggas accept, um, Mediocrity. Yeah, mediocrity. Oh, Gloria. Mediocrity. Wait, what did I say? Mediocrity. No. What did I say? Mediocrity. I mean, you said mediocrity. I don't no, know. You I said, said media, something like No, mediocrity. Damn it. What did I say? <laughs> A meteorite. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, mediocrity. Oh. Yo, son, whatever. Y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? I really, let me make sure. Oh, <laughs> I need to go back to Hooked on Phonics. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around too many Africans. All the words is getting blurred. <laughs> Son, I can't say like, nothing right anymore. Uh-uh. It's so wild. Like they, like they, they accept mediocrity, and it's just like, why? Um, why are we still supporting this man who, time after time again, like, and I guess because he does make bangers, like it's hard not to. Music is one of those things. It's hard not to let go of because if that was the case, R. Kelly would not begin supported the way he is or stuff like oh that. Oh my, know, but, that's a whole, like, we could dedicate a whole episode yeah. to that. <laughs> like, well, like, I, I, I guess when, you know, somebody's throwing like some popping beats behind a, uh, some, you, and your body is automatically moved. So you're, you're, it's easier for you to kind of turn a blind eye to the dumb shit that they do. Hmm. But it's, it's, but it's, for really how sad. long? At the expense of who? your fans who has gotten you to the point where you're at now, like not for nothing. You can make all the music you want, but if you don't have some fans or people supporting you, you're not going to move any further than where you are <laughs> now. So my point Wait. is this, like <clears throat> people are paying money to go see you. I mean, obviously I'm hoping they were seeing other people, but if people were paying to go see you at Coachella and then you don't even show up and you're talking about yeah. visa issues, which uh, one, they been signed a contracts and stuff like that. So to your point, like why wasn't this done early? And then it's as simple mm-hmm. as like visa issues. Then we need to brainstorm. So maybe that's um you know a warning or a lesson to future artists or you know coming from Africa wherever who have to deal with visa issues is that you need to have a contingency plan. What if these people get denied? Do we have backup? Can we get a band in the states? Can we like what what do we have to do? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But now, now there are people who are excited to see you. And, you know, they were streaming Coachella last weekend. And I was like, oh, that would be hello dope to see Whiskey. Only to find out, you know, visa issues. The band wasn't mm-hmm. coming. He going to come next weekend. He didn't even show up at all. Two weekends? It's trash. I, can't, it's I, trash. I, can't, I don't understand it. And I get it. Because Nigeria is such a, a trash, again, back to my, you know, shithole country. Because Nigeria is so trash, you know, the music is one of the only things that can, that is kind of your escape. So I can see why they would support Wizkid, um, even with the fuck shit. But again, like we also are accepting of politicians who steal money and blame it on monkeys and snakes uh, for stealing the money. So, you know, it's understandable why we would still support Wizkid. (laughs) Um, but apart from that, uh, to get on a sexual note, (laughs) you so fucking dirty. He goes, uh-huh. um, did you see, wait, did you see that, um, when Cardi B was on Jimmy, one of the Jimmy's Fallon, Fallon, thank you. Um, and she was talking about, you know, her, her catchphrases and she was like, you know, that Al sounds like a sad cat. And she was like, Ow. Oh, yeah. Ow. <laughs> I saw a clip like. She said, like, so funny. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like Cardi B, oh. but. Yes, on a sexual note, which is dirty. That's, that's a lit woman. Mm-hmm. Cardi B, dope. Anyway, but yeah, um, our main man Tristan Thompson, uh, this guy who clearly does not care about women and his children, and um, does not care about getting caught cheating because there's no way a man that's six, whatever, six, seven, six, eight, who is who is noticeable from a mile and a half away would be you know who actually these so there's no way for a man who cared that a six nine to be caught in a, in a you know in a club kissing some rando or some girl he finds while his baby mama is in the crib you know i just don't understand this man you know yeah if you're gonna well... keep, like if you're gonna cheat you need to take notes from lebron you know lebron only cheats with women who have things to lose 
you know, like Beyonce. So you know for a fact, I know that Beyonce and LeBron, they're free cheating each other because they have things to lose. Um, LeBron is cheating with high class women because, you know, let's not get into that. But, um, Mm -hmm. the way that Tristan just acts and he just acts anyhow, I don't understand, man. I do not, I just, <laughs> I don't get it. Well, let me go no, in on you? Tristan a little bit. Let me, uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take the mic from you for a second because uh, there is a special place and I truly mean a special place. And I've brought this up before when we were talking about Kevin Hart. There's a special place for men who are cheating on their woman ladies, girlfriend, wives, whoever, while they are pregnant, you have now gone beyond your your general scope of cheating and decided to take your ain't shittiness one step forward <laughs> and say, you know what? While my woman is carrying life, going through all these things, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just go ahead and dick my penis into somebody else. Now, I don't even, at this point, I can't even tell if you just don't respect women, you know the woman you're with, or you just don't give a fuck about life in general. Because I just feel like for you to sit here, like I can't imagine somebody sitting at home, belly big as hell, feet swollen, or they tired, or maybe they're active. Maybe they don't have one of those tough pregnancies. They're active, they're out and about, but they still going through, you know, um, your general maybe pain, throwing up, whatever. And you sitting here, and said, so, you know what? Um, hitting somebody up or whatever the case may be. I'm sliding through and I'm doing all of this while wow, I got a shorty pregnant. I, I don't understand it. For me, that's the ultimate level of trife to me personally. I, I, I don't get it. And for that, for Tris, Tris, Tristan, sorry guys, to go from, you know, his previous, you know, mother of his child. And whatever that scenario is there, we really don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if he left her to be with Chloe. I don't know if they broke up in the club. Either way, the fact that to, you know, Chloe got with him while he was pregnant with another, uh, well, he had another woman pregnant. But either way, my, my beef ain't really with Chloe. We could talk about that another day, but it's really with Tristan because he has shown in two scenarios that he ain't shit. Period. They say he's allergic to a tri- he's, he's allergic to a third trimester. <laughs> <laughs> Son, like what what level do you need to be on that you simply don't give a fuck? It's crazy. Yeah. Actually, and my thing, I have a two part issue with this whole thing. Um, one with Tristan because, um, you know, I think there's a way to care. It's just, as crazy as it sounds, right? There's a way to care and cheat, right? Um, in a sense where. You're, you're trying to move in a way that, you know, protects, not necessarily protects, but you don't want your significant other from finding out, right? So, you know, you wouldn't be caught in public, right? Especially as a superstar, you know, doing these things when you know you shouldn't be doing, you know, you wouldn't just randomly leave the text, your phone there, or your text messages is open, or you wouldn't, there's certain things you just wouldn't do just so that, you know, your significant other doesn't find out from certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the way just Tristan just moves, it's just like, why? Like he, it's just like he just doesn't care, you know? And then, and he's just like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He's an idiot. Um, and I don't want him on the cows either because he's growing in our team. Now, <laughs> my second issue with this whole thing is the person that he decides to cheat with this little, not even a little, this, this Kardashian lookalike, first of all, because everybody for some reason nowadays, wants to look like the Kardashian sisters, one or the other. One one of them. Either it's Chloe, Kim or Courtney. Or Kylie, I guess. Um mm-hmm. the fact that he would cheat with this lady who is so thirsty for Instagram likes and, and she's so thirsty to be one to put to, to be one to be on there, like to be out there and popular in these streets. Uh, did you see her page before? Mm-mm. Okay. Her, I but I did like see Stephanie. pictures of her. She is a very mm-hmm. beautiful girl. Okay. Now this this girl, um, she she goes on Instagram right on her page. She she starts tagging. She first of all she posts like pictures of Tristan and them 
on there, right? On her page. She tags Chloe on the pictures. She tags Wendy Williams on the pictures. She, um, she, she actually puts like the, uh, the video of them having intercourse on her like Instagram story. Oh my. Right? Was, but, was that confirmed but, yeah. to be both of them? Yeah, it was both of them. Yeah. Oh my. Um, and then she takes it down a little later, right? It's just like, who are, <sighs> Actually, maybe three parts to this, which we, which will tie into another podcast. Social media, mental health issues. I'm also going to talk about this on there as well. Um, one day we're going to, you know, sit down and talk about this. Why in the world do you want to be put on so bad? Like, what is is clout more important than getting money? Because you, what you could have easily done was, hey, Tristan, you know, we could keep this on the wraps or whatever. All you got to do is slide me. You know, a cool X, Y, and Z every month or every week. And, you know, it's going to be our, our little thing. You know well, what maybe not, because as we learned in the case of Kevin Hart, when he said, you're not about to extort me, I'm going to just tell on myself, you know, maybe that's not the way but to see, go. But see, she, but see, she was about to go out and she was, I think she was threatening to, she was threatening to tell the world about their relationship just for money. In this case, all she had to do was be Tristan's side piece and enjoy the fruits of the, you know, the labor. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, then from there, she could work her way through the inner workings of the NBA, and then she could be making her money, and she could be that NBA thotty. But oh I don't know. I guess, I guess clout is more important for her. Um, it's or being corny. Put on, First of all, I can't even so imagine corny. exposing my like. Not only is it his his business, is your business too. Like, exactly. baby girl, you look stupid. Like, don't put your business out there and somebody else's business out there like it does you more harm than good you know and I, like i don't get it and she's all tagging her chloe and everything the pictures and, and of both of them together i'm just like what has this world come to where like this is okay i i don't know i i don't get it man but either way um i guess when you're rich or when you're stupid but you know what? Things. I doubt Chloe was surprised by this. I doubt Chloe, you know, because yeah, you know, like at the end of the day, he is a young, black, rich, successful basketball player who travels yeah. all the time. I'm sure she's dated one before. She's a celebrity herself. I'm sure she probably knew that this comes with the territory. Does I mean was she was she hope as well she's pregnant or it came out this way I doubt it you know you, you still want a little bit of cooth when it comes to this little thing shout out to Nicki Minaj but I think that she's not surprised by it at all and essentially too but everything considered you kind of have to make you know the bed you or how does that thing go you have to uh, lie in the bed, bed you, you made yeah um. Wait. You made your bed, now you lie in it. Something like that, right? Pretty much, yeah. You, Because, you, again, you know, you were dealing with him or, and he had another woman, you know, carrying his child. So, it's just, it was just, it wasn't a clean love story all the way anyway. You know? So. I don't know, either. either way, I'm I mean, sure I she knew what she was going to have stuff into. God bless the whole family. I know Chris, you know, they said the devil works hard, but Chris Jenner works harder. Chris Jenner <laughs> is definitely going to use this to um, work in another episode of, I mean, another season of Keeping Up. Because, I mean, they've been renewed for another season, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. So this is definitely going to make great content on their show. And Chris Chris definitely knows this. Um, Tristan knows this. I'm pretty sure he's going to be an episode. So he's going to begin, you know, some supplemental income from this. Maybe this money that he's going to be getting from the show would be used to fund more side chicks, which used to create more content on the show. Who, you know, who knows? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. God bless all of them. Shout out to them. Tristan is an idiot and he really doesn't care about Chloe um, or women in the, their tr third no, trimester. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Like, he does not. Like, you are disrespectful. Like, on that level, I don't, he does not respect or love you. Fellas, ladies, if you are going to cheat, make sure you take LeBron's handbook. 
ladies, if you are going to allow your boyfriend or husband to cheat, make sure that he is following LeBron's handbook. OK, um, that's how you know that he cares. Moving right along. Uh, yes, move. We're moving right along. So there was um, a docu series that came out, um, and is mm-hmm. Christiane Amanpour. And if you're not familiar with her, she's um, a journalist on CNN and a correspondent as well. And right now, she has a six part TV program called Sex and Love Around the World. And she's traveling to major continents. So she's traveling to Asia, Africa, Europe, and also the Middle East to get um, everyday people's accounts on modern day love. So, of course, she visits my beloved country and homeland of Ghana. And specifically, she went to Accra to ask, you know, your everyday people about sex and love in Africa. Now, Mm -hmm. she interviewed, um, and this is clips that I'm seeing. I actually haven't seen the full episode for whatever reason. Um, I was unable to get to it online, but if I do find a full episode link, it would definitely be in the show notes. And she talks about, um, she interviews Moesha Budong, which is, I guess, essentially. Yeah, she's a Guinean actress. I guess she's kind of almost like a socialite too, a little bit. And yeah. they were in the nail shop. And basically, uh, Moesha states in her interview clip, and that will also be in the show notes as well, that, you know, it's hard for women, especially, to have a come up in Ghana. So in order to have a come up, you need to depend on man financially. Um, specifically, you know, sleeping with men and doing certain things in order to secure the bag as we call it. So mm-hmm. right now, according to the Mingos, right now she's taking the bag and flipping it. <laughs> Not tumbling it. Yeah. She flipping it and doing a whole lot more with it. So a lot of people were upset by the interview because one, she stated that you need to do these things in order to survive in Ghana. I think also the survival thing um, the use of the word survival had a lot of people hot because one, what she stated that she's getting from it is like, you know, getting her rent paid, getting bags, getting shoes, cars, whatever. One thing to know is that in Ghana, you do have to pay like for rent two years in advance. Um, so you pay that upfront. Or even if you're buying like land property, you're, you're buying everything cash, you're buying it full out. So, you mm-hmm. know, that first of the month stress that we have here in America, at least. You know, you don't have them issues in Ghana because you got to pay up, up front anyway. So you pay for a spot for two years. Um, and obviously, you know, it's probably hard to have that money up front. So, you know, she does what she does. And so Christine asked her, you know, what are the expectations of you in this relationship? What she stated is that, you know, you, you need to have sex with the man, be loyal to him um, and all these things, which, you know we would expect and I, the man that she's dating is married and I guess he has other mistresses as well you know yep. so that was part of what was going on the clip that had that you know gone ablaze people were very upset that Christine or Christiane I'm sorry I'm not sure correct way to say her first name came to Ghana and they interviewed her and she wasn't really a good representation of what it is to be a working woman in Ghana. So people are very upset. And I think I understand why they were upset, but at the same time, it's also important to note that this is her truth and this is mm-hmm. her reality. And sometimes just because we don't like somebody else's truth or how they live doesn't make it any less valid. Um, mm-hmm. That's one, because we can sit here and say, Oh, there's a bunch of people out here doing certain things and working hard and doing it the right way. But when Christian Amanpour comes to Ghana is only highlighting someone who basically um, uses their body or they sleep around with people or have sex with people in prominent positions in order to move ahead. And that's not really representative of Ghana. Maybe not your Ghana, but it is representative of someone else's Ghana. And not only that, this occurs everywhere. People yep. use what they have to get what they want. So people were very upset that because Ghana is typically a conservative country, 
still, even though with infiltration of like Western ideals coming into Ghana, for the most part, people are still very conservative. It is um, a predominantly Christian country as well. I mean, there's Muslims there as well as other things, but Christianity pretty much dom- dominates and even with Islam as well is a more conservative approach. So mm-hmm. people were very upset. And to me, I think it's like really important to note that people will do what they have to do in order to survive and whatever that means to them. To her, it's shoes and bags. Do I think that's the mean of survival necessary? No, because I mean, shoes and bags and having a Louis Vuitton purse, freaking Louis Vuitton shoes is not the whole premise of me living my life, you know? Um, I mean, okay, so I watched the video and, Mm -hmm. um, in the nail salon, she was talking to two women there. Now, the both women are also sleeping with men to, to kind of, you know, to secure the bag. Um, Mm -hmm. one is sleeping, which is Moesha sleeping with a married man and, who also has mistresses and the other lady sleeping with a single man. And she makes a valid point that, you know, um, if you're a woman, you know, trying to make it out in this world and you you want a good place for yourself, you know, you want to live maybe in Accra and you want to get a nice place. Um, you know, who has two years worth of rent to put up? Like niggas barely have one month, you know, on the first of the month, you're you're struggling to get your rent up. Mm -hmm. You're crying because you need rent money. You know, who really has two years worth of rent to put up? You know what I'm saying? So, I can I, I can understand why she would do this now. Why people were up in arms on Twitter um, when that is the reality that most women in West Africa, and most women, I don't want to say most women, a lot of women in the world also face. You know, why are we? I guess it kind of like nobody wants to show their ugly side per se. You know, nobody wants to be you know told about themselves. So I can see why it would be triggering. Um, Nigeria is it's the same thing. Like if a, a lot of girls and most times you know, we'll sleep around for money. Now that's uh it's a way to survive. It's a way to buy your Louis bag. It's a way to get on Instagram. It's a way to eat. It's a way to pay your rent. You know, these are things that happen and um men are looking for these things. So it's it's a trans- transaction. But at the end of the day, like because we have this we try to walk this moral high ground of, you know, being Christians or being, you know, devout Muslims as well. Um, you know, or, you know, this this you turn this, you want to be prim and proper. You don't want to show the realities that people definitely face um, around the world. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Christina Amanpour's show, or Christina, whatever her name is, Miss Amanpour's show is is love and sex. So obviously she's going to go to find the best content um, around the world. You know, she's going to find, whereas Africa is a great place to get this content from because you know that, you know, people do these, these are the cultures. Um, the men are extremely misogynistic, you know, in a patriarchal society, you know, that these things exist. So, you know, why are people upset that she interviewed Moesha? I mean, I don't know. Uh, Maybe she interviewed other people and she just didn't air it. Um, Mm -hmm. Or maybe it just didn't make great content, but, or, or maybe it's Moesha's made better content than others. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's still a reality that um, a lot of women face. Like, you know, people, we live in a, in a society that where money really does most of the talking. And if you don't have money, um, nobody really respects you as an individual, honestly. Um, if you want to keep it a buck. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is. Um, uh, I, I had another thought toward it. Oh, she so also had like other clips of like, you know, I, I know she had a soccer, this guy, not really a soccer player, but he's like this older guy who plays soccer on the field. They was kind of poor. And he was telling um, Christine Amapur about how he met his wife. He was on the field. He scored a goal. She got so happy and she started sharing. From there, she's, they started talking. And I think they got married or they eventually ended up being together. Now, he, uh, Christine Amapur asked him, would he cheat on his wife? He said, no, that he can't because he's poor. Um, he can't <laughs> cheat on his wife. It, which is wild. Um, Rug niggas, <laughs> y'all ain't got room to cheat. Is what wow. he was saying. Um, okay, and, but but no, what? what but it's, it's, that's not even what I heard. Right? What I heard was that if I was rich, I would cheat. That's exactly what I heard from when he said, "I'm too poor to cheat." It's not that he didn't say I wouldn't cheat because I love my wife so much. He said, "I'm too poor to cheat." Um, which I guess is on the, which which kind of just shows the I guess the power dynamic in Africa where. If you have money, 
that allows you to pretty much do anything you want. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen clips, I've seen clips where, you know, they go around asking women, would you rather be poor and have a loving husband or would you rather have a husband that cheats, but you have a G wagon, you know, obviously being rich. He said, honestly, a lot of women answer that they would honestly be rather be, um, you know, know that their husband cheats, but it's in a G wagon. Nobody wants to be, you know, love don't day. pay the bills. <laughs> exactly. It don't you know pay the like, bills. Okay. Like, like at the end of the day, you want to be comfortable. Like, bro, being for all of you that live in America or have never been to, uh, Africa or, you know, bro, or even in America here, like being poor. At least here in America, you have some kind of fighting chance. You know, you have the system. The system may be for maybe for blacks is not set up as better as well as it is for the whites, but you still have a somewhat of a fighting chance, right? Bro, if you are poor in Africa, you mm. are poor. Mm -hmm. You can't eat. You can't go to school. You cannot do anything. So it's understandable why w women would want to use their assets to get ahead. Like, why wouldn't you? You'd be dumb, honestly. Um, to not use what you have to get what you want. So this whole thing where everybody wants to take the moral high ground, like, oh, she's a runs babe. Me runs babe meaning, you know, for those that don't understand, it's, uh, you know, a girl who sleeps around, uh, you know, for money or whatever. Like, she's a runs babe or she's doing this, she's doing that. Bruh, listen, get it how you live, man. Or do mm -hmm. do what you can. This whole thing where... And I was and really... I, I, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was really dying in the clip when he said he doesn't have money, so he can't cheat. <laughs> because... Yeah. It really, that is the reality for a lot of people. Son, you don't have time to be trying to stick your penis or kissing on someone else or even women, whatever the case <laughs> is. When you're trying to figure out where to eat, dog, you don't even have exactly. the energy. You don't even have the fuel to even entertain <laughs> another person because you're trying to figure out where your next meal is coming from. If you're going to have enough money to do the things that you need to do. Ain't no one worried about another woman and what she doing or another man and what he's doing when you don't even got the basic survival things down pat. So with that being said, my man's was basically saying if he had a coin, okay, mm -hmm. yep. he would be out here because we all know that as much as we try to sit here and act like it doesn't, money buys you a lot of luxuries here in this life. One of those things that also kind of buys you is tolerance. Okay. A lot of things that also, uh, another thing it buys you is people more willing to put up with the shit. Okay. Word. You is, it's easier. It's actually easier to be more truthful as a rich person because at the end of the day, if you're sitting here, I'm sitting on millions and millions of dollars. Okay. And you go up to a woman, Hey, I have <laughs> such and such going on. A lot, a lifetime partner, a long term partner, wife, girlfriend, whatever the story may be. And, you know, I'm not about to leave her, but this is what I'm trying to do with you. Well, some woman might be like, okay, you know, that, yeah. that is what money buys you. Okay. And, and actually, some people are doing it while they broke too. And let me just say, I'm not condoning it. I'm just speaking as a reality for some people. <laughs> You sit here and you are dead honest. I'm not about to leave, but this is what we're about to do. Yeah. Some of us might be like, or no, let's not be saying girls, like people in general might be like, okay. And be <laughs> with it. Because the money yeah. buy you that luxury. Oh, you pay you you paying such and such for me? Sure, no problem. Are you Word. taking care of that rent? You buying it? Are you paying for it two years in advance? Are you paying my, my school tuition? You paying my car? No, you put a little extra money in my bank. You supporting my side hustle. You, you supporting my podcast <laughs> or my website, my <laughs> blog. You Honestly. bought me a new DL, a DSLR camera so I could take popping photos and hopefully build a following. A lot of people is going to shut up because that's what money buys you. Now, is the money everything? No. Obviously, we know that. We know if you're still at home by yourself crying at night or you really want someone who could dedicate all that time for you, the money ain't making enough for that. We know that. You want someone to really love and cherish you? Money doesn't buy that either. All I'm saying is that money buys tolerance. And that's also yeah, sure does. important. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. I mean, at the end of the day, you got to eat, you know, that's really what it comes down to. You have to, 
you have to survive. And sadly, our system isn't set up where, um, at least, at least in Nigeria, where, um, somebody who comes from nothing can necessarily survive. You know, a woman who is beautiful could definitely make it, um, out there because she has to use her beauty and sadly, maybe some of her body parts to survive. It's a reality. So where this, this whole thing where people want, you know, you know, get on their high horse when, you know, even the niggas are, that, that are shouting up and down on Twitter are the ones that are also cheating and are broke as well. You know, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand, man. I, I don't, don't, I don't understand it. Man. Well, I don't get it. Better than day eight. Worry about yourself, live your life, drink your water, and your dear rights. Okay? Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's honestly, in that interview, there's so many things to break down to about, you know, like the patriarchy and just trying to make it in Africa. Cause like you said before, just, being poor in America is completely different from being poor in Africa or in many other mm-hmm. third world countries. Like you can kind of like in certain instances, like pull yourself by the bootstraps and can make it, or there's like government assistance. or there's certain things to kind of help you and push you. There is none of that in Ghana. Ain't no social security. There's no welfare. There's no like women centers or stuff like that that's helping you or they're they're trying to build stuff like that now but like for the most part there's not anything to get you from where you are to the upper echelon it's it's really really hard to do so so it's just to your point a, a lot of people are resorted to doing certain things that obviously what they want to do no but they find themselves doing in order to put to food on the table or to survive mm-hmm. or to even keep up with things they're seeing because, you know, maybe they have a little, um, you, you know, they have access to the internet and they see all these things on Instagram and stuff like that. And they want it too. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, because people want nice things and there's n- nothing wrong with that. And they see it. Yeah. And so therefore they know what they got to do or how they got to sell market themselves to get to where they're mm-hmm. going. So it just speaks to the bigger picture of, you know, the system and stuff the like system. that. Uh, mm-hmm. And survival. Either way, guys, um, if you have anything on a topic to add, you know, you know what to do. Use the hashtag ask both sides. Email us at both sides podcast at gmail.com. You know, there's a lot of things coming. The website is should be up and running very soon. Um, we're mm-hmm. definitely going to start working on that. Um, you have any suggestions, things you want to hear. Please let us know, guys. Um, I will be in D.C. this week, guys. So if you are around, hit me up. Maybe we could do something. Um, That's one thing, guys, for listening, guys. It's a Both Sides podcast. You have a great one. Peace. Bye.